This time on Custom Works, we're working on the A40 pickup and we're getting all those panels to fit right and we're gonna be working on the panel gaps. Also, I got a lift. So we're looking at the door. First off, full disclosure, I did make a bit of a mistake. I filled this hole in at the back of the wing, but of course, look, the door has to actually swing into there. So what I'll do is put, I'll have to put like another bulkhead in there um, to sort that out. That's, that's no real problem. What is a problem? First off is, at the, on the bottom hinge of this door, just in here, it's just bolted, just a fiberglass, nothing else, nothing else holding that door on other than fiberglass. And there's like a bit of a metal plate in the top, but down at the bottom there's like this random piece of angle line that seems quite um, sturdy. So I can weld the hinge to there and we can make, you know, when we do the interior we can cover all of that up. Now, another thing with this door is that when it shuts, so it shuts here, and as we can see, we're nice and flush. We're about, we're about there for the first 30 mil, and then wow, it goes off. It's just, just unbelievably bad. And also here, where it's, it's probably up, uh, up this, up the A pillar here, it's probably a little bit tight there, but then, oh, don't worry, because it's getting way slacker up here, at this gap here and also just here where there seems to be barely any relation between the shape of the door and the wing there as all this should be in one flat plane so there's definitely work to be done on the door another thing with the door if the door shuts it shuts but in here there is no rebate for it to close up to no, no, no Nothing for a seal or anything like that. I'd say we've got quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of work to do to this, and um, I think first what I'm going to do, I'm going to weld the plate in the bottom, get the hinges sound, and I'm going to make the door so it shuts. And I think I'm going to cut the top section of this door off and bend it out. If this was a steel car, you know, we could just bend this until it was right. But it's not, it's fiberglass, so I'm gonna to have to cut it and re-angle the, uh, the top of the door um, just to make it fit. But that is just, I'm gonna say it, it's the worst fitting door I've ever seen. It was really bad, and of course we had this massive gap, but what I've done, I've, I've raised this up with some matte and resin. We've got it so that the door's only a bit out. Um, the door's on its latch there. If I open the door. Yeah, I've really brought this out quite a long way. At least sort of 10 mil down in this lower part. As a consequence of that as well, I've also had to bring out the bottom of the sill as well quite a way. And that's had to be packed out. Uh, probably 11, 12 mil, something like that. Here, I cut the door across here and you can probably still actually see there behind the um, glass I raised this whole section up uh, 10 mil and that closed this gap here um, quite a bit uh, still tapers a little bit but we can sort that out and down the front of uh, the door here what I've started to do is build this part up in fiberglass so it comes somewhere near there and also this um, front fender that we've done a, a lot of work on inside, I've bought this whole bit out so that I can skim all this in filler. And the reason I've done a lot of this in fiberglass is because if one thing this car needs is some thick fiberglass on it because it's really not very thick at all. Uh, also, just so I've not got like, I don't know, like half inch of filler. So the fiberglass is just a little bit stronger it's a little bit more structural strength and obviously on bits like this i've got to do that because i've literally cut the top of the window off to make that work 
Um, we've still got to look at how we're going to have some sort of rebate here to paint up to. That's, uh, that's particularly tricky because the window doesn't actually touch anything here. This car would have been, this car had such bad panel gap fitting that never mind being on the motorway driving along thinking, God, it's cold in here because it's so drafty. I think this would have just been drafty on a clement day sitting still. You wouldn't want your back door to have gaps this bad. But, as you can see here, things really are looking up and things really are coming together to make this, uh, this door fit a lot better. But don't forget, we've still got to put a rebate on the inside for the door to actually shut and seal up to. Okay then, so, now we're looking at the bonnet. Now, we've added a lot of rigidity to this bonnet and as you can see, it is super rigid now and it's about a thousand times better than it was when it was it had all the rigidity of like a paper bag oh that's been too cruel plastic bag right so now it's rigid it doesn't just flop onto the car so if i hold this side down and we have a look at that side so i hold this side that's about where the bonnet needs to be there's just too much gap on that side so I think there's only one option, and that option is going to involve the Sawzall. There we go, bonnet looking, even though there's only half of it now, bonnet looking better than it's ever looked. But as you can see, there's still a mile to go here. So I think what it is, is on this underside, there's this moulding, and I think that is what's holding it off. Anyway, let's get rid of something and then try and fit it again. Right, and so, cut that bit out the back. We've put it on there. Right, the gap is going off whew, somewhere over there. But for this part, <clears throat> and if we look in here, and across here, even I would say down to the front there, that looks better than it's ever looked. You know, with some fiberglass in and some work, that will actually fit. May seem super dramatic to cut the whole bonnet in half, but the work that it would have required to make that thing fit is just not worth doing. This way round though, we cut it in half, we get it to fit right down all of those gaps and then we just glass it back together down the middle. And it seems like the nuclear option, but actually at the end of the day, works out a lot quicker and easier. Okay, so with this one I'm going to do, just with some wood screws, I'm going to screw that rock solid in place um, as it is, and then try and offer up the other side and see how that fits. Okay then, so round the other side, I've moved this, placed it up. Now, this bonnet is still wildly out just here, and there's going to, be, there's going to have to be a lot of fiberglassing and filling, and certainly on this back edge, um, that's going to have to be bought up because, as I said, that side, it seems just, it's overshooting all the way across to here. So, just a ton of problems there. But, as we look at the front now, this curve lines, out, uh, lines up with the edge of the panel a lot better. The uh, grill sits a lot better. And as you can see by this gap, What's that? 12 mil, probably at the worst, going back to nothing at the back of how much this bonnet was out. And um, without cutting it in half, I don't think we ever, we never would have got to this. It's a bit like 
Someone said, I've made an A40 pickup, will you make me a bonnet? Yeah, what does it look like? Well, I'll explain it over the phone. That's what this is like. Not very good at all. But, that's why it's in here. That's why it's having all this bodywork done. And that's why when all these things are done, everything's right, everything's straight, and it's got panel gaps, it is going to look awesome. In doing the bonnet and on that door, I have noticed that some of these grey panels um, of the car, and this is something to really watch out for, as I've ground the paint off, the paint has come off really quickly and really thickly down to it's right through to the gel coat. And there was a small crack in this bonnet, and I thought, oh, there's a crack, but it's not. It's the paint, which just sort of comes away. And then underneath... Is this funky, uh, funky purple metal flake that feels feels like it's been waxed before someone painted it? This is like look at this. This ain't even. It's not even like a you know a wrap's harder to get off than this. So yeah, I'll be uh, I'll be stripping that bonnet then. But in the meantime, down in the middle, grind all this uh, this paint off. I'll get it bonded together. I'll tell you what would have made this job easier, getting all this off. Remember that scraper from the other week? But he's gone. Now, I've done quite a lot. I've been quite busy and probably not filmed all that I should. But uh, if you just bear with me, I'll try and explain what I've been up to. Um, so, at the back here, I, uh, I glassed all the way down here and then I bought this whole panel out and reshaped it. This is, this is you know, from probably 10 mil um, down to nothing around there. Um, also, got some fiberglass in here. Start bonding the body to the bed so that this can start to be uh, made good. And of course, we're using fiberglass mat and resin there because there's less chance of it uh, cracking with any movement. You know, it really sticks, it's really strong. Moving on towards the window, um, what we've got is, uh, we've got this problem where there's no, there's no way of fitting a rubber to the bottom of the window. And as you can see, the window's got quite a bit of slack to sort of bounce around. So what I've got to do is make, make this fit up to the window. So what I've done here, I put like a, it's probably about an 8mm strip and glued it all the way around here and um, pie cutting on the corners to get the curves and then I filled up to that, I bonded that on then I filled up to it in the hope that I'm going to be able to get some of this um, this like draft stripping with the uh, sort of fur and that will sit along there the glass will fit up to that and then the glass will run nice um, it will be a lot more weatherproof, definitely a lot more draft proof than it just sort of banging around in the door. This is like, um, this is draft strip for like patio and sliding doors. Now, I know it's not car stuff, the problem here is that there's no car stuff that's going to clip on it. Things are made in pressed steel, uh, you know, car seal clicks to that profile, but we've got none of that. So that's why we've had to do that, hoping that's going to really give the car a lot nicer feel inside. So it's certainly stopped this. Um, like this window's like this window's a joke. Look at this. This is no good. And on the rest of the door as well, you can see at the minute the door is filled shut. I filled everything, and I always prefer this because you know you can long block across it, and that makes it really nice, and you know everything very uniform and all the panels are going to be at the same level when it's finished. And I've even done along the bottom because obviously the bottom of this door has got a little sill. And what I'll do, I'll recut this. But at the back of this sill, down in this lower corner, this bodywork has probably been bought out 15 mil to meet the door. There's no way I could angle the door in, no adjustment on the hinges. You know, sometimes this is what you've got to do to get the body straight. And similarly, I've had to do this at the front here. And I've added a lot of fiberglass to this front fender um, to make that a lot more solid because it was very, very flimsy. And then I filled across between these two panels to get that panel fit. 
There is always a problem with this when you come to cut the panel out, you do sometimes go off the line, but you can always fill that in and make it better. This is still probably the better way to do it. So moving to the bonnet, which obviously I cut in half before, but now I've bonded back together and everything's dry, and I've hung the bonnet so it does it actually, you know, it hinges and works. And the hinges I've used are hinges off of a mini door. And the Mini's got a bit of a curve, and so is this, except the Mini is like on the door, but with this, it's on the bonnet. So you know, they, they sit nice and straight. They're sitting on the kind of curve they should be on, so they're looking good. And also, they look really factory. You know, this is a Austin A40. Mini was obviously made by Austin. So, you know, they, they look right for the period and everything. So, uh, that's all gone good. Now the front of this car has had some major surgery. We want it to look a little bit sort of, uh, you know, like a, a racetrack refugee. So we're gonna have a, a, a piece of rolled aluminium laser cut in here to mimic the original grill, but in a lightweight aluminium way, you know, real sort of drag racing style. So what I've done is formed this rebate for it to sit in. Now, I've done this with by sticking eye bond on its edge and then fiberglassed up to it with a lot of fiberglass. Another thing on the original car, the grill opened in two parts, so the lower part of the grill stayed stationary and the bonnet lifted. But now what I've done, I've formed this new bottom to the grill and the whole grill lifts with the bonnet now. This gives you know, better access to everything. Obviously we've got to get the radiator in there, but better airflow. It's just generally better. I really don't know why that bottom piece didn't always move like this. And of course with those mini hinges, this goes high enough up that you ne it's never going to be in your way working on the car. Moving forward, what we're going to do is bring this bonnet, op the opening line of the bonnet, I'm going to bring it there and then taper it down to the bottom of the grill. So a little bit of extra fiberglass there, that will form a bit of triangulation in the panel, and when that's filled, this line will run all the way down and taper to nothing, obviously on both sides. Always nice if both sides of a car look the same. So if I'm ever putting anything on a car, if I'm ever adding a part, I will always build a, like a flange and a rebate. So the bodywork comes around whatever I'm doing and hides the edge. So you never want to see any raw edges. And this is where the new grill will fit. It will sit up to that rebate, then curve around to the other side, and it will all fit within this rebate, giving it a lot cleaner, more sort of factory look to it. Always remember, if ever you're messing with the grill on a car, it's the face of the car. No one wants to mess, mess that up. It's always got to be, you've got to take that extra bit of effort just to make sure the car's got a good face and the face ain't all crazy. Right, so what I've done here, I've covered all this in um, masking tape. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fiberglass from here, coming all the way down. I'll probably go over this line. That line's just my guide for the shape of how the bottom of the sort of grill bonnet area will be. What the tape will do, it will make it so it sticks to this bit and all of this, which I want it to stick to, but it won't stick to this bit. And the resin won't soak through the fiberglass and just with a good yank, it will pull that away. I'll be able to trim it up and then I've got the shape of the bonnet. And also, I've got the perfect fit to this very curved panel down here. So that's it for this week. Join us next time when we're going to be doing more work on the A40, more cool stuff right here on Custom Works. In the meantime, don't forget to subscribe, give us a big thumbs up, press that bell icon to get regular updates, and all that kind of stuff. And follow me on Instagram. Until then, thank you very much, and good night.